and generosity in victory. Say that with me. Say strength in victory and generosity in victory. Let's look at 1 Samuel. And then I just want to read in a particular part of scripture. And then we're going to go ahead and get in this because I want to get you out of here at a, at a right time. In fact, I want to continue to respect the time that I said I would let you out. Verse 7. Let's look at verse 7. Then David said to Abathar, the priest, the son of Hillamech, bring me the ephod. Abathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord. Shall I pursue this raid, this party, and will I overtake them? Let's just stop there. I'm just going to stop there, and then I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get into this. Father, we ask that you would have your way with us this, this evening, this afternoon. Lord, and speak to us from your word. Father, I ask that you will anoint my lips, anoint your word. Father, let the word go forth like a hammer. Father, breaking up things so the heart is tender to walk before you at another level. Father, we pray for the word to run swiftly and be glorified in this room today. In Jesus' name, amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. amen. We've been talking about David, and we've been talking about how David ended up in a situation where he probably shouldn't have never been at. And that is because he was part, uh, he was with the Philistines or uh, operating with the Philistines, or should I say hiding amongst the Philistines because he was running from Saul. And by him running from Saul, he wanted to join up with the armies of the Philistine to avoid Saul killing him. And the Bible says that the enemy or the Philistines begin to, see David or some of the the kings that were part of the Philistine army begin to see David and they said that they didn't want David to have anything to do with them because they knew the kind of man and the conqueror that David was and last week I reminded you that like David the enemy also knows who you are the enemy knows what God has put on the inside of you who God has called you to be what God's purpose and plan for your life is. And a lot of times, if we're not careful, we can get caught up uh, in things, get into places, get into positions, as I said last week, that we should not be, and that we should be in a place where God wants to use us and where God wants to be glorified through us. Now, I want you to understand something. In everything with God and the way God uses David, I call it providence. Say providence. And what providence is, is that things have already been set out. God has already planned things out. So, in other words, you can be doing something in a wrong way, but it can work out in God's providence in the end for you. Even though you start off in a way, and it may have not been God's assignment, it may have not been God's plan for you, it may have not been God, what God wanted for you, but God would allow that thing to ride out because overall God's providence is going to be the thing that stands. And for us, you may have started off in a wrong way. You might have ended up in a bad position. You might have put yourself in a situation. But I want you to know, that even though things may, have, may work out the way they are, God's hand is still involved in your life. Can I tell you something? God has not given up on you. Can I tell you something? God is not mad at you and God's not surprised at the things that you do. And how many know we can do some things that are not in line with God? that are not right with God. And a lot of times we put ourselves in situation, but God, out of his providence, out of his perfect will for mine and your life, know how to work things to our blessing. And again, it's not so much to our advantage, it's that he be glorified. Tell the person next to you, God wants to be glorified. Tell them again, God wants to be glorified. Well, David, David ends up back in Ziklag, which is a place he shouldn't have been, but nonetheless, that's where the Philistines gave him. 
But when David comes back, his family is gone. His wife, his children, everybody is taken away. Now, how is it that you come out of one bad situation and you get into another bad situation? Has anybody ever been there? That you thought, I'm going home, this is going to be good, the family, the wife going to have food, there's going to be coffee, everything's going to work all right. To find out when you get there, all hell has broken loose. All hell has broken loose. And you're ready to rest and you're ready to sit down, but now you got to fight again. And see, there's some of you in here that God has called you to fight, and he knows that you've come out of a battle, but you you got to understand something, that even though you come out of a battle, you might be facing another battle. And see, it's not dependent on your own strength because we think we can't fight the battle. When we get ready to face another situation, it looks like I'm not going to have the strength, I'm not going to have the power, but remember this, the power doesn't come from you in the first place. It comes from God. How many hear me? And David is in a situation. I mean, he goes from bad to worse. His family is gone. His children are gone. I mean, the enemy has taken everything and robbed him of his stuff. Taken everything. And see, like David, every one of us, listen to me, every one of us, you, me, will have a zigzag experience. You and I will have them experiences that go on in our lives where we go through heated situations and we find ourselves coming out of one situation and entering into another. Finding ourselves coming out of a, a bad, uh, out of trouble to go right back in trouble. And how many know trouble don't feel good? And how many know trouble we would like to avoid trouble? But God can use trouble for his purposes. God can use the trouble that you go through for his glory. God can also use trouble to discipline you and bring you to a place where you acknowledge that you need God. Because there's times that we can get to a point in our walk with God that we don't need, we don't need to pray as we should and we don't need to fast as we should and we don't need to seek God as we should. We don't need to lift our hands and worship. But God at times will allow trouble or trouble will come. But the trouble's not to destroy you. The pr trouble's not to hurt you. The trouble is to make you and I believe in this place God is making some people but here's the problem it don't feel good especially when God's trying to do something supernatural see you don't know the end you don't know God's plan you don't know God's purpose but can I tell you something it's much brighter and much bigger than what you think it's much brighter and it's much bigger than you could ever face See, and David didn't know that, but God was working things out. Remember, David's not too far from becoming king of Judah. But you've got to go through your zigzag. You've got to go through your breaking. You've got to go through your humbling. You've got to go through those places that God has to teach you and show you who you really are. Can I tell you something? You, you may think you know who you are, but you really don't know who you are. Can I tell you something? You may think you've got it all together and that you've arrived, but only for God to show you that you have not arrived and you ain't got together. Because the moment you think you got it, God will allow something else to come in to show you that you just don't got it. Tell the person next to you, you don't got it. You don't got it. Tell them, tell them not yet. Tell them not yet. Tell them not yet. Listen, I, I want to tell you something. You're on your way there, but you're not there yet. I want to tell you something. You're on your way there. You're on your way to where God wants to take you. You're on your way to what God has planned for you. You're on your way to every door that God has opened for you. You're on your way. But you're just not there yet. God still has to do some working in you. Is God doing some working in you? Can I tell you something? God's doing some working in me. And can I tell you something that doesn't always feel good? And can I tell you something that where I am sometimes is, I, I know it's not God. It's been me to put me where I am. But thank God for his grace and thank God for his providence. Thank God for his mercy. That if I get off track, God puts me on track. When I get off of the path, God is able to put me on the path. And, that, and, and this, is, this is amazing how, how David has to go through this. And, and what I want to 
what I want to focus in on is this. Is that, of course, David goes through it. David goes through a situation where his, these men want to stone him. They want to kill him. We talked about that last week. You know, they, they wanted to destroy him. In fact, they started to put the blame on David. You brung us here. You put us here. You put us in this situation, right? It becomes a blaming game. Have you ever been blamed on for something? How I many you know that doesn't feel good? That don't feel good when someone is blaming you. Yeah, I did it, but man, don't kill me. Don't tear me down. You know, I made a mistake, but don't destroy. Don't, don't mess. Don't hurt me. I understand that when your families and your children and you got a community of people that you, uh, you're coming home to, you're expecting to be there, and then not, for them not to be there, David, it was all your fault. You led us there, and now we've come home, and look where we are. Look where we are. How many know that where you are is not where you will always be? Let me say that again. Where you are is not where you always, where you will be. Because God, listen to me, God has a plan in mind. And God can take your mishap and turn it around for a blessing. Some of you have put yourselves in some difficult, troubling situation. You're saying, Lord, how am I getting out of it? How am I coming out of this? Wait on God. Trust God. You do your part and God will do his part. You do your part and I said what? God will do his part. What was David's part? And this is where I want to get to. The Bible says that he strengthened himself. And I don't want to focus on the part that he strengthened himself. Because I believe we need to strengthen ourselves. But one of the things that blessed me was that David began to do what? Inquire of the Lord. Write that down, that word inquire. David began to do what? Inquire of the Lord. The word inquire means to consult. It means to seek out. It means to call upon God. It, it, means to, it means to look to God. And, and one of the things I think out of this story that we need to understand, and, and here's where David was. For 16 months, David wasn't seeking God. For 16 months, David wasn't looking for God. For 16 months, David had no purpose in God. He was doing his own thing. He was out fighting and doing everything that he thought was right to do. Do you hear me? And that's like us. Sometimes we get away from that. Sometimes we get away from the things that's meaningful. And that is spending time with God, seeking God, looking to God. D David gets away from consulting God. But all trouble has a way that when it comes in your life, it has you get back on your face and start calling back on God. See, trouble has a way of causing you to turn back. Uh, listen to me. God breaking you, God doing whatever he needs to do, has a way of getting you to turn back to God. And say, God, I need you. Does anybody in this room need God? Does anybody in this room need God for your situation? I mean, we, are, we all got situations in this room. But I mean, know that we've got to learn to turn to God. We've got to inquire of God. Now, I don't believe our situation, maybe some of us, but I don't believe it was to that point to where David was, where now his family's gone. The Bible says this, that the enemy didn't kill his family, but they did hold him captive. They hold him in hostage, right? And some of us here have family, have situations that the enemy still has his hand on. The enemy is still keeping in bondage. Listen to me. The enemy is still holding them down. And one of the things that we can't do is become relaxed and become comfortable and, be, and say, well, you know what, that's, that's it, they did it. No, we've got to learn to say, you know what, we've got to seek God. We've got to inquire of God. Say inquire of God. I've learned this, that when a crisis happens in my life, I take a look, little time out. I take moments out to think and be, I begin to collect my thoughts. See, when a crisis happens, and we're all susceptible to a crisis. Some of you might be in a crisis now. The worst thing you do is to turn away from God. When a crisis comes, you turn to God. You gather your thoughts. You gather your heart. You say, you know what? I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to let my emotions be the thing to dictate how I'm going to handle this thing. How many know that when crisis comes, you don't have the strength to get through it on your own? 
How many know that when a crisis comes, you don't have the ability or the power to come out of that thing? You need God to come in and show up in the midst of that crisis. How many hear me in this room? You know what else you got to do? You got to remind yourself, who's your God? You got to remind yourself that your God created the heavens and the earth. You got to remind yourself that when he spoke, everything came into existence. You got to remind yourself that your God is faithful. If he was faithful before, he'll be faithful again. If he was faithful to mama, if he was faithful to my brother, God will be faithful. If he brought me out of one situation, God's going to bring me out of this other situation. Is there anybody in this room? I don't care how bleak, how bad it looks, God is still able to bring you out. You also have to encourage yourself in the Lord. That's what David did. And then you have to ask God what to do next. Lord, what do I do next? Lord, what do I do next? Because a lot of times, if we're not careful, we will respond or move too quickly, and God didn't tell us to. God didn't say it. And because we move too quickly, we hurt ourselves. We put ourselves in a bad situation. How many hear me? The family's been disciplined, but I, I believe that God is working something out. I believe that God was working something out with David. I believe God was planning, getting ready to do something with David. Can I tell you that promotion is coming to some of you? Can I tell you that promotion is on its way? Can I tell you promotion is at the door? Does anybody hear me? promotion is coming in your life promotion is coming but be before promotion Ziglag has to come before promotion Ziglag you have to go through Ziglag and Ziglag that place is that where God breaks you Ziglag is that place where God begins to break everything about you and show you that you really do need me because we, we think we don't need God. I can get there on my own. God says, no, you can't get there on your own. You've got to go through zigzag. And you've got to, you've got to go through an enemy because I want to show you something that you just can't be comfortable, but you've got to learn how to fight. And how many know that when you go into prayer, prayer is about fighting? How many know that when you go into prayer, you just don't give over? and No, you get in there and you fight for what you want. You fight for what you believe. How many hear me in this room? I'm telling you, some of your promotions come, but the enemy knows, let me catch her, let me catch them here in Ziglag, and let me cause them to be paralyzed. How many know that when you become paralyzed, you can't move? Some of you, the enemy has tried to put you in a paralyzing stage, and you've not been able to move. You've not been able to go forward. You've not been able to press in. In fact, your prayer time has become stagnant. Your worship time has become stagnant. Why? Because the enemy is paralyzing you. But David made up in his mind, no matter what the devil's doing, no matter how my friends see me right now, I'm going to inquire of the Lord. I'm going to strengthen myself in the Lord. When I can't get anybody to give me strength, I'm going to find strength to give God some praise. And I'm going to seek God. I'm going to seek God. I'm just not going to jump on this thing and try to do it on my own. I'm not going to try to make this happen. Because sometimes we in trouble. We get in trouble when we try to make things happen. How many hear me in this room? The Bible says that David, let's look at verse 9 in chapter 30. Verse 9 says, David. Where am I at? Verse 7. Then David said to Abathar the priest, the son of Halimic, bring me the ephod. Abathar uh, brought it to him. And David inquired of the Lord. And look what, look what David, look what David begins to ask the Lord. He just doesn't step out and do something on his own. David, in prayer, in prayer, he asks the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? And then he says, will I overtake them? And look at verse, verse 8, pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in, watch this, and succeed in the rescue. You will what? Succeed in. David is asking God, this is what's going on in prayer. God, shall I pursue him? 
God, if it's not your will, then I'm not going to do anything at this moment. God, if it's not what you want, I'm, I'm going to put everything on pause. Are you hearing me? Somehow we've got to learn how when we pray, somehow we've got to learn how as believers that we've got to go to God for everything that we're asking for. Even for the battles that are going on in our life, we've get, got to begin to take it in prayer and say, God, I don't know what to do. God, I need guidance. God, I need direction. Lord, what I do? David learned something from chapter 27 to now we see a man that's humble and that has an, he's asking God for help. He's asking God, and what is he asking God? Lord, shall I pursue the enemy? Shall I go after him? Lord, and will I overtake them? I like that because there's some battles that we go into, if, we're, if God's not with us, that the enemy overtakes us, and we not them. Did you hear me? There's some defeats in your life, if you only had God's word on it, you would have you gained that victory. Some of you are in battles that you didn't consult God about. And because you didn't consult God, you got in a worse situation than you were before. And now you're saying, God, where are you? And God says, hey, I've always been where I was. You didn't take time out to seek me on it. You didn't take time out to look for my direction. You didn't look for my guidance. Some of y'all might be, I ain't saying it here. You might be in a relationship. You married somebody. You weren't even supposed to marry them. And you say, God, let this man, this man. God said, I didn't make that decision. You did. Some of you might be in a job. I don't know where you may be. But you made a decision without inquiring. You made a decision without consulting God. And because you didn't consult God, you're now in a worse predicament than you was when you went in. Can I tell you something? It's better to stay single than to marry somebody that's going to be a devil. Is anybody in here? Tell the, tell the person next to you, don't, don't rush to get married. Don't, don't be quick to get married. Tell them this. Tell them this. Make sure you pray. Tell them, make sure you pray. Come on. Anybody here with me? Make sure you pray. Make sure you call on God. Make sure you get the leading of God. Make sure you get the guidance of God. Make sure you get the direction of God. Make sure you get God's word on it. Because whatever God's word is on, it's going to be blessed. It's going to prosper. Whatever God's word is on, it's going to succeed. It's going to succeed. David says, will I succeed? And I think that's how we should go into prayer. God, will I succeed? If I make this decision, will it work for me? Is anyone in this room with me? God, before I, I, I jump into this job or do this, make this investment, God, will I succeed? Now, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I'm preaching to myself here. I just have to be real. I'm preaching to myself because I hate losses. I hate losses. That bothers me. But I can't get mad at nobody but who? myself because I made the decision to go into that thing without consulting God first I made the decision to get into that situation without saying God what do you think about it God what do you say about this situation God what do you what do you say God will I overtake them God will I succeed and right away, we begin to say, well, where's God? And God didn't do this. Well, the devil was stronger. That's a lie. The devil's not stronger. It's just that you made a decision. And you got in a place where God says, I got to take my hand off that because you decided to get there. I can't put my hand on that because you didn't wait for me. David learned from chapter 27 to now before I do anything. I mean, are you getting this right now? Are you getting this? That before I make any decision, before I make any choices, I need to hear God on this. I need to what? I need to hear God. You need to hear God. You need to hear God. You know where confusion comes from? Can I tell you where confusion comes from? Not hearing God. 
That's what confusion. When people say I'm confused, when people say oh, I don't know what to do, well, you need to stay on that altar until you do know what to do. You need to stay there until God tells you what to do. Until God tells you what to do. And be careful. Stop trying to listen for him a voice from heaven. Because sometimes, well, God ain't spoke. Well, how, how you listening to him? How you trying to hear God? How you trying to hear God's voice? Because if you waiting for a voice, that ain't going to never happen. That's never going to happen. In fact, God only spoke, according to the Bible, maybe three times, twice, from an audible voice that was twice with Jesus and I believe Paul got one I believe I could be wrong but I know Jesus he said this is my beloved son who I'm with God speaks God speaks but it's rare that God will speak from our voice hey Wanda doesn't work like that doesn't work like that is anybody here Come on, let's, let's, come on, let's get, how does God speak? God speaks where? From his word. God speaks from his word. Now, here it is. If we're not hearing God, guess what's, what that mean? I'm not spending time where? In his word. The way God speaks, the way God confirms things, the way God assures you of things. And sometimes you've got to wait. Well, pastor ain't said nothing. Yeah, he's speaking. You just ain't heard him yet. Pastor ain't said nothing. Now you ain't gone in that time of really devoting your heart and devoting your life to hearing him. I'm telling you, God speaks all the time. God speaks all the time. But we're so quick to want a response. We're so quick to want answers. And I've learned something from this. This is, this is why the Lord says, go back here. Because I want them to hear me. A lot of where they are is a result of them not consulting me. And David inquired of the Lord. And David inquired. That word again is another form of asking. Asking is a, is a form of prayer. Not only petitioning God, but asking God. You can go into prayer and you can ask God. Lord, what is what is your will? What is your will for my life? What is your will for me when it comes to a single person getting married? Lord, what is your will? What is your, I don't care how cute they are. I don't care what they, I don't care about that. Lord, what is your will? What is your will? What is your heart in this matter? Because I'm telling you, we can make some decisions as David did and David learned. From his, what is it? Shall I pursue this reign? Will I overtake them? I, I love that question. I love that question because not every the the enemy that we face without God becomes the enemy that has victory over us. When we when we face the enemy without God, Jesus never faced the enemy without consulting God. Jesus prayed about the will of God. Jesus sought the will of God. He prayed. He knew the will of God. He knew the heart of God. And what, is the, what, is it, what does it say? The next verse, verse 9. Look what it says. It says, David and the 600 men went with him to Besor Valley where some stayed behind. Go on. 200. Now hold on. I want to I I get back on something that I want to I wanna touch on where God begins to tell him. Go back to that verse before verse 9. Okay. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this ready party? He asked the question, will I ever take it? And here's the answer. Look what God says. What does he say? Pursue them. And look, look what God says. Pursue them, he answered. And then God tells them, you will certainly overtake them and you will succeed in the rescue we see of someone praying but and we see of God giving a response and saying listen go after him so you know what that tells me that it is the will of God for your family to be brung out of bondage it is the will of God. For David, it was the will of God that you go. You go pursue. You go after him. And guess what, David? You got my word on it that I got your back. Tell the person next to you, you want God's back when you face a situation. 
Come on, tell them, you want God backing you up. You, you don't need a man. You don't need money. You don't need a doctor. You need God backing you up. That tells me that that's the will of God. We find the will of God right there. David asked God answers. Go after them. Go after them. Go after your family. Go get them. And guess what, David? I got your back. Guess what, David? I got your back. Guess what, Mariah? I got your back. On every decision you make, when you seek me out for that decision, I got your back. You know when God's got your back or not because when God says it, it's going to happen. Is anybody in this room with me? When God says yes to it, you can bet you that it's going to happen. Is anybody in this room with me? All you need to get is a yes from God. Tell the person there, I need a yes from God. Tell the person next to you, I love you. I ain't got nothing against you. Thank you for some advice. But I need a yes from God. I don't know if anybody hear me here. I don't know about you, but I need a yes from God. Does, is there anybody that need a yes from Jesus? That you know, 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 that no matter what happens, God's got my back. I need a yes from God. And God, what does God do? He gives them that yes. He says, go after him. Go after him. Oh, what it is to hear from God. What a joy to know. I mean, guess what? After you hear from God, now you rise up in confidence. Now you got boldness. Now you can face the devil. And, and, and more than that, you can face it almost like fight by yourself. Because the Bible says, now let's go to the next verse. Now let's go to the next verse. Verse 9, it says this. David and the 600 men with, with him came to Beshur Valley where some stayed behind. Wait a minute. Some what? Some stayed behind. There was 600, but the army got broke down to 400. 200 stayed back, and now there was only 400. But I got news for you. You got to understand, sometimes when you go into battle, you may not have everybody that go with you. Not everybody going to go with you in battle. Not everybody, but, but I, got, I got good news for you. That even though you don't have everybody going in battle, you still got God that's going to go in battle with you. Now, whatever reason, these men, the, the Bible says they stayed back. They watched you equipment. The Bible says that actually that they were really exhausted and tired. It says that they just didn't have it to go fight. But I, I've, I, I've got a problem with that. Because when I know my mama and I know my wife and my children, Children are in bondage. You think I'm not gonna fight? You think I'm not gonna fight? The Bible says Mercedes that 200 lag behind. They said we just can't make it. Wait a minute, your wife in bondage. Wait a minute, they got your children. You tell me you can't fight? Is anybody in this room with me? And I understand exhaustion. I understand that we do get tired. I understand that sometimes in the battle, oh. It's just like, oh, I don't think I keep going. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I've been there. Anybody ever been there? I mean, things just happen right after another. Happening, and you're like, man, I'm, I don't know if I can keep doing this. The Bible says that these 200 stay behind. David said, you go ahead and stay behind. Now, you got to understand, the army that they were up against was about five to 10,000 soldiers. The, Am the Amalekites had a huge army. But God tells David with 600, go and fight them. So that tells me it doesn't matter how big your enemy is. That tells me it doesn't matter how many of your enemies you may have. All you need is a word from God. If God tells you pursue, you don't stop because them 200 don't come with you. You tell them, okay, y'all just stay here and get some rest. But you know what? We going on and we about to get our family and we about to get our stuff and we about to get our children and we about to get our kids. I'm not about to stop because 200 want to stay behind. And there may be times that you're doing something for God and there may be times that you're in pursuit of something and not everybody will go with you. Not, not, it's, 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 I don't know if it wasn't just that they, it wasn't important to them or maybe they were just tired because I get it. Sometimes you can get tired. 
Can I, can I be honest, my love? And get tired. But I love David. I believe there's some Davids in this room. <laughs> and you got to imagine, they get home, they ain't got no food, they ain't ate. So they got to go now to war again. See, this, here's this. You, Jesus said, man shall not live by but by every word. So actually, if you can get a word, the word becomes more sustenance than the very bread and water you drink. Sometimes we think we need bread and water when God says all you need is my strength. Sometimes all you need is God to give you a word. And when God gives you a word, God's word will become, I don't know, I don't know, you've ever eaten something and when you put it in, all of a sudden you start, okay, I'm feeling it. My body, the, 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 the nutrients of my body just absorbing everything now. Sometimes that's the word, how the word goes. When you get that word in you, man, it starts getting up on the inside of you. Something starts rising up. And before you were weak and tired and weary, all of a sudden you're like, no, no, we can do this. Now. I can still go on. I can go on. Anybody ever want to give up on something? Okay? Want to give up and throw in the towel. And all of a sudden, you begin to seek God and begin to call on God. And what happens? You begin to receive strength. And David leaves these 200 men, he tells them this. You guys, you watch the equipment, and we're going to go and recover. What made David so sure that he was going to recover? He had a what? He had a what? Y'all yes. didn't. He had a yes. He had a word. Yes. Let me ask you. For the situation you're in right now, have you got a yes? yes. you again for what you're dealing with have you got a yes on it because it doesn't matter what the enemy says and what and how many of the enemy we shouldn't even be focusing on the enemy remember the Israelites when they were coming out of Israel and they were going into the wilderness God tells Joshua tell them to go send 10 in 12 in whatever 10 in spy the land and, and going, God never sent them in there to tell how many enemies was in there. We have a problem focusing on the enemy when we should be focusing on our God. Is anyone in this room? And the Bible teaches that when they went in there, they started saying the giants, there's giants in the land. There's giants. Yeah, the land is plenty, but there's giants in the land. And because the Bible says there were giants. The 10, the 12 that went in, only two was able to go into the promised land. That was Caleb and that was Joshua. Because the other 10 came back with what? A bad report. And every time you open your mouth and you speak something contrary to what God's word, if, listen to me, if God gives you a word on it and it may even delay itself, that word might delay. It may not happen because we want it to happen when we want it. God may delay that word. Sometimes God will check your faith and see if you really do believe what I'm saying to you. I mean, didn't it take faith for David to go after the enemy, pursue them? The Bible says, the next, I don't know what verse that was, but it says, and David went. And David went. Why are you not going when God says, go? Are you hearing me in this room? See, God is saying yes. That's what he's saying. I'm saying yes to your situation. I'm saying yes to you. Don't let the enemy, don't focus on your enemy. Don't focus on what you're not doing. Because a lot of times we're focusing on what we're going through. Oh, I'm going through this. No, 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 no. Focus on your God who's able to bring you through. How many believe that God can bring you through a situation? God can, God can bring me through it. God can, God can bring you through it. 200 of them were exhausted to cross the valley. But David and the other 400 continue in pursuit. Next verse. And I'm almost done here. Look what it says. 
They found an Egyptian in a field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat. Go on. Part of cake of pressed figs and two cakes of raisins. He ate and was revived, for he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. Go on. David asked him, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. Go on. We raided the Negev of the Kirites, some territory belonging to Judah, and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag. Next verse. David asked him, can you lead me down? To this raiding party he answered swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master and I will take you down to them next verse he led listen to this he led down David down and there they were scattered over the countryside eating drinking and revealing reviling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from, say, Judah. Remember I talked to you in the beginning about God having providence. God's a God of providence. I don't think things just happen. I think they happen, and I think God has his hand in it. Now, here's the thing I need you to understand. This Egyptian guy, young guy, the Bible says, that he was part of the Amalekite army, but he got sick. And he was part of that group that went into to, uh, Ziklag and plundered everything. Well, the Bible says that a sickness fell on this guy, and the, and the leaders, I guess, of the Amalekites left this guy for dead. Do you hear me? They left him for what? Did they li- really leave him for dead, or did God have a plan? That's, that's what I mean by providence. There are just some things that happen. You said it. It ain't nothing but God. See, when you don't know how to get to where you need to get to, and when you don't know how to get to the place that you're saying, God, I don't know how, God has a way of leaving things in your path. You may not know it at at first, but God causes things to work for your good. The Bible says this, that this Amalekite was left for dead. David began to uh, 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 get him back to health, strengthen him back to health, right? And what does he do? Feeds him, feeds him, and he gets strength. And all of a sudden, this guy becomes David's answer. I call him the informant. I call them the informant. There are things lying in your path and all you need to do is really look closer. There are things that God has already made available, things that God's planned out for you. And a lot of times we're looking over and when we need to stop for a moment and say, God, help me see what you see. Help me see. Help me see it. Because whatever God has for you, That's right. It's going to work for you. Amen. The Bible says that this guy becomes an informant. And what does he do? He says, I know exactly where they are. Can I tell you something? God wants you to get the victory over your enemy. God wants you to rescue your family. God wants you to rescue your children. And God will go to any means to giving you what you need to gain the victory in that situation. Is there anyone in this room that hear me? Is, I said, is there anyone in this room that hears me? The Bible says what? That they go down and these guys are parting. The devil's rejoicing. The enemy, they, they're like, yeah, yeah, you know what? David caught them at a right time when they were drinking. And when you look at that word drinking, they were drunk. And you know that when folks are drunk, they can't respond right. (laughs) 
right? When you're drunk, you just, your, your mind is just altered. You just can't operate. And the Bible says that they were all laid out partying. Hey, we've, we've, we, we've rejoiced over what we've got. We rejoice over the spoil. We rejoice over the victory that we got. All along, David was on his way to, to get back what the enemy has stolen. How many hear me? How many know that when the enemy got your stuff, you can't just rest and be comfortable? I love David. Now remember how many, how many people were in this Amalekite army? Between five and 10,000 people. David with 400 men took this army out. The Bible says all that was left was 400 and they got on camels and they began to take off. After that, that fight, I told you guys last week, the Amalekite army nation was wiped out. David wiped them out. Can I tell you something? God wants you to wipe out your enemy. Can I tell you something? God don't want you to leave them alive. God wants you to wipe them out. I mean, I mean, how many have been going through some patterns, them same circles, and you tired of it? You're tired. That's that same. That's what the Amalekite was. It was that kind of uh, a nation or, or spirit that would come around. It would come around in cycles. You could never get the victory over. But I want you to know something here today, that God through Jesus has given you the victory over that Amalekite spirit. Over that spirit. Do you hear me? Can somebody say amen? amen? Can somebody say praise the Lord? Can somebody say glory to God? Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? God has given you the victory. You know what I've learned? That David not only recovered his family, David not only recovered his children. David not only recovered his possessions, but you know what else David recovered? His relationship with God. What did he recover? Listen to this. He got out from under the cover to get back under cover. He got out from under the cover to get back in but it was through God's mercy and God's grace God's providence that brought David back in and I wish I could but if you read a couple chapters before David becomes the king of Judah like two chapters three chapters in they come to David because they they said you know what we honor you because of what you did and I'm not going to be able to get there because my time is up but after David gets the spoil of the enemy, he kills the Amalekite, gets the spoil. The Bible says that David goes throughout Israel and passes out. In fact, the men that were with David were like, no, no, we ain't giving those guys, those 200 guys that didn't fight with us, we ain't giving them nothing. Just give them their wife and their kids and let them go on. Because they didn't fight. But how would that be? That in the first place, y'all didn't do that anyway. You didn't get the victory because you had the strength to. It was God that gave you the victory. It was God that won this battle for you. Yeah, you fought, but God was back. You can't do nothing without getting back under cover with God. You can't do nothing. You can't win a battle. And then you're going to try to take credit. And then you're going to try to say who can get it, who can't. I mean, come on. If, we're like that sometimes. I mean, as a church, we're a whole, but sometimes we try to take credit for, it was me that did it. It was I that did it. I did this. I, wait a minute. It ain't you. You ain't did nothing. It was God who did it. Now, we thank God for you. We thank God for putting his spirit on. But when it comes down to it, it's all Jesus. How many hear me in this room? The Bible says that David began to give out the spoil. And the Bible says that these people were happy and they heard what David did and they made David king of Judah David started and that's why I told you before you can get your promotion all along God had David in mind for the kingdom for a king 
But you can never reach that place of promotion until you first go through zigzag. Because it's in zigzag that you know how to fight your enemy. Some of you right now, God has allowed you to get in zigzag, but he didn't leave you there to stay there. He didn't leave you there to keep you there. He says, I want you to fight your way out of there. Will you go? Will you go and pursue? Will you go and fight? And not let the enemy have the victory. You can either stay where you are or you can fight your way out. And all it takes is you getting back undercover. Undercover. Saying, God, I'm inquiring. I'm asking you, God. I'm not moving until I get a word. I'm not moving until you tell me something. I'm not moving. I'm not going to do anything. I've been tempted to. I've been tempted to. Anybody ever been tempted to do something you know you shouldn't have did? We all been there. But you know what, God? I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay there. I'm going to stay there. Every head bow, every eye closed. I'm done. You're in this room. And you might be at that place where you're in Ziglag. And I think the emphasis for me today is just to simply say, come on, God wants you to recover, but you've got to get back under his cover. God wants you to recover. Everything that God said, God wants to restore. But are you under his covering? Are you under God's protection? Do you got a word from God? Do you have a word from Jesus? Like David, he said, pursue. You shall succeed. What word has God given you? What word has God released over you? Father, I pray today, Lord, that if I, as I have spoken your word, Father, that your people that are here, Father, that they would take a self-evaluation they would examine their hearts and father that they would come back under your cover lord i know you're willing lord i know you're willing lord i know you're